I'm here with my, my dancing cubes because in fact cubes are great. I mean, we can not only look at the difference of two perfect cubes, but we can also look at the sum of two perfect cubes. And this is great because if you remember, with perfect squares, sum of two perfect squares, it's hard to factor, hard to think about how to factor that. But here with the cubes, doot, 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 no problem. We can do them both. Okay, that's the good news. We can actually figure out how to factor easily, well, I don't know how easily, but we can factor the difference of two perfect cubes and the sum of two perfect cubes. That's the good news. The bad news is that the factorization is a pain in the thing. All right, let me show you how this goes. I'm going to write down the factorization, and then I'm going to try to convince you that, first of all, the factorization is correct, and then where it all comes from. So suppose you have the, the difference of two perfect cubes. So let's say you have x cubed minus y cubed. So that's the difference of two perfect cubes. How would you factor that? Well, one factor is always going to be just the thing itself without the cube thing there. In fact, if you think about it, the same thing holds with the difference of two perfect squares. Ooh, I put a y there. What a wacko. I mean, that's OK, but whiz. Well, I don't know if this is going to work. Let's see. High tech. It's great. All right, let's put in here um, the x and then minus y. Now, if you think about it, the, the sum of, uh, I mean, sorry, the difference of two perfect squares works the exact same way, right? I always have a factor that looks like this. But now, because it's cubes, I'm going to have some stuff with squares in it. And what I'm going to have, actually, is x squared plus xy plus y squared. Now, that's a whole mouthful of stuff. But that actually is the factorization. And let me try to convince you that, in fact, this is going to actually give the, the right answer. Namely, if you were to all multiply all this out by distributing, remember, everything gets hit with everything else, we should end up just with this. So there should be oodles of cancellation. Things should be, should be a massacre of middle terms, right? Everything should just die, and there should be no one left to tell future generations what happened. OK, let's make sure this really is the case. Let's take that x first of all, and I'm going to start to distribute it just a little bit. The x times the x squared happily gives me the x cubed that I want. Okay, and notice that the minus y times the plus y squared gives me the minus y cubed that I want. So now I have all these middle terms. In fact, let me show you the middle terms. I've got to take x times this, that's a middle term, and then also x times that last term. And then I've got to take the minus y times this and the minus y times that. Now let's see what happens and see how this conspiracy works. That negative sign is the key to the conspiracy. Because if I'm going to have cancellation, I have to have some negative things and positive things to cancel. Now look what happens. When I take that x and multiply it by here, I'm going to get a what? I'm going to get a plus x squared y. But later in life, I'm going to multiply these things together. And notice what that is. That happily is a minus x squared y. So this term and this term will cancel each other. These two and these two cancel. OK, now what about this, this term here? That's a plus xy squared. But then later in life, I'm going to have a minus xy squared. So in fact, these will cancel with these. And there's nothing left. So in fact, everyone in fact does die off. So this really is the right factorization. And one way of remembering it is to remember that when you have the difference of two perfect cubes, you're always going to have the number minus the number. And then what's going to be left is going to be always of the form x squared and then a y squared, and inside there's going to be an xy, and everything has to be positive here. The plus signs have to be here between them, because this minus sign will take care of all the cancellation. Okay? So that's, that's the formula for the, the difference of two cubes. And actually, the sum of two cubes works the exact same way. First, there's going to be a factor which looks just like this without the cubes. So you have an x plus y. Same theme here x squared, xy, y squared. And let's figure out how the sign should go, just by thinking about it. We can figure out the formula. These last terms have to give me a plus y cubed. So what do you think this should be? Well, obviously, since this is a plus, this should be a plus. And now you can just make a guess as to what you think this should be. If I make this a plus here, I'll have no cancellation, because I'll have pluses everywhere. So it must be a minus just to get all that annihilation happening. And in fact, that's what it is. So you can see the differences between these two formulas. With the difference of two cubes, I have a negative sign here, but then a plus sign here. And with the sum of two cubes, 
I've got a plus sign here and the negative sign here. So basically, whatever you have when it comes to cubes, difference or sum, the same thing will be in this factor, and then the opposite thing will be in this factor. Okay? There's a way of remembering it, but better still would be just to understand this because it's not that hard. Let me just do a couple of examples really fast for you so you can see this in action. So let's take a look at uh, 8 minus t cubed. And notice that really is the difference of two perfect cubes because 8 is a perfect cubed. It's 2 cubed minus, and then I'll write this out to be really pedantic, t cubed. Now I can use the formula that's right over here, right? There it is. You can see it's the difference of two perfect cubes. Um, or we can just think about it together. Let us reason together. I know there's going to be a factor that's going to look like 2 minus t, or t or 2. OK, <laughs> we'll go there. OK, now, then the other factor is going to look like what? Well, that's going to first start off with the square of this. So that's going to be a 4, 2 squared. And then I'm going to have the product of these two things. Well, that's a 2t, a 2t. And what kind of sign am I going to want? Well, since I'm subtracting here, I have the negative sign already there, I better put a positive sign here. And the last term has to be the t squared to top off the extra t to make this a t cubed. What sign do I want? I already have a negative sign, so I make this a positive. There's the factorization. And, and you might want to check this, by the way. Certainly, to be honest with you, I always like to check this myself because I'm so bad at arithmetic. This is an 8. This gives me the minus t squared. Everything else should cancel. Here I see a 4t. But then happily, here I see a minus 4t. Here I see a plus t squared. But happily, here I see a minus t squared. Everything cancels out. Great. All right, one last one. See if you're really with it. In fact, you know what I'm going to do? Why should I be doing all the work? You know, I think we should share the burden, don't you think? 125a cubed plus 27b cubed. And you know what? Why don't you do this one? And, and I'll just see if I can do it right after you do it. So try it right now. See what you can do.